Hi there, thanks for joining me. Today, uh, obviously enough, I'm here at Bathurst. And what I'm thinking of having a bit of a play out today is um, we've got the P1 uh, Racing or P1 Gaming 12 hours of Bathurst coming up in just a couple of weeks' time. Uh, and today I want to have a bit of a play with some of the other cars uh, that are on the grid just for fun to get a bit of a feel for them and just to see what what it's like it's going to involve doing uh let's say a, a, a brief install lap and just making some rough and ready changes to the setup so that i can get a lap done at bathurst and perhaps give you a bit of a commentary um along for the ride will be uh jeffrey who is the spotter in crew chief and because i thought it might be nice for you to get a bit of an idea as to what he brings to the situation. Uh, I'm a big fan of uh, Crew Chief and want to thank those guys for the incredible work they've done to enhance our sim racing experience. So uh, that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to get out in the stock setup to begin with. Can you hear me? Okay, David, I can hear you. Now, pit exit here is pretty deceptive. If you press the limiter... Pit, the pit exit is clear. You break some cold, let's get some heat. You've got to love Jeffrey, haven't you? What I was going to say, if you uh, release the limiter at the line, end up with a drive-through because it's uh, actually at the light with the pit marks in your ends. Setup's not feeling crazy bad. A bit of a there. Uh, I've got the tyre temps available so you can see which end is uh, letting go. We'll have a bit of a look later in the lap at um, brake temps as well. Bit of a lazy engine this one, so you tend not to bring its neck too much. Stable through there, quite likely it's through there actually. Some of the other cars are real hands to get working. Two yeses. Down into Forest Elbow, which is can be very tricky for brake lockups. The emerge out of the box. Apart from that bit of um, throttle oversteer, actually feels pretty good. So with the brake temps. Okay, we're hitting the banging on the limit now at, uh, at relatively low speed, 240, 250. We need a lot longer gearing. Let's look at brake temps. Okay, we can, uh, we can reduce the cooling on those brakes a little bit. And really that's all I need to know for an initial, initial stab limiter on. The, the, when I hit those bumps, it really jars. I've got one of those uh, OSW wheels and uh, bumps and stuff hurt. I don't think it makes me any faster because of that. So back into the garage now for a couple of changes. So what I've done here, I've just gone in and lengthened uh, the final drive ratio and tweaked the gearing a bit. I like to have a, a usable first gear, if possible. Um, haven't touched steering range yet. That's a fairly slow steering rack. Uh, I normally work on about 15.5, and certainly I w the car wasn't a handful. So I'm actually going to... Um, Will I slow that steering down or not? I think I'll just leave it alone. Um, I increased uh, diff on power, one click, and I lowered diff uh, lock on coast, one click. And it's behaving pretty well, so I'm going to just reduce preload a touch and see how we get on. We'll soon know. And I've lowered uh, rear wing. So um, we've trimmed the car out a bit. I'm going to lower engine cooling. It's only 13 degrees today uh, at the track. Uh, you can see here at the bottom we're using... Um, the real the live weather plug-in which I find just very exciting to have to be driving around knowing I've got the same weather that actually is occurring at this moment in uh, western New South Wales in Bathurst country New South Wales 
I won't touch any roll bar yet. I haven't formed a, de a decision on them. And we'll head back out there again. Disengage limiter. Track's clear. Push, push, push. Okay, so here's my logic here. The car is turning in beautifully. The front, the front end is pretty strong. Uh, the balance there, it looks pretty good until I get on throttle. So I'm not going to make big changes to the suspension balance at this stage. I'm going to, I will lower rear spring rate. So I'll make that symmetrical. I'll lower rear spring rate, rate uh, one click. I'm going to lower slow bump damping so it settles on the rear axle faster. Um, I'm going to ooh, rear any roll bar is almost attached already. I won't detach it yet, but I will put the diff lock on power up another click. Uh, two clicks in fact, and I'm going to put preload back up where it was. So I'll have a bit more diff all the time and I'll have a bit more again uh, on power side. So let's see how that works for us. Now uh, saved, uh, you have to watch the key exit. That's certainly still a good turn in. No problems there. First gear is using it here in the cutting. Cold tires all around. Jeffrey. Slide up there in the forest elbow. Let's see how our gear rate goes this time. Not even prop yet. So prop gear 270. Should be able to hit about 290 in this car. Okay. It certainly pulls up well. It, it uh, brakes harder than Jeremy Clark. Sector three is yellow. Approaching a, uh, a gay Mardi Gras, so uh, we can still improve things a bit. Starting the hot lap with 100 meters. Lock 
just reaching fourth for the cutting. Do you reckon taking that in second? Getting the best for the ladies here. Then I'll have first. Sector one time's okay. Okay. The rear is a bit wavered, but you need the rear to rotate to get through anyway. Got early short shift there, otherwise you're going to hit the wall. I'm trying to be a bit conservative there to the fronts. Could actually use the brake pass really slightly. Sector two time is quick. Sector 3 is 0.5 off your best. We're into the 208s and I'm not unhappy with that. Yellow flag, Sector 1. The, um, the car is handling okay and extracting incremental gains is going to be possible. And if we were going to race this car, I'd spend the time and I'd also get better at driving it. But it's giving me a, a reasonably good impression of the car. Uh, not so hard to drive, pretty predictable, nothing too tricky and uh, you know I think it's a car that you could pilot quite happily uh, in a 12 hour event. So I'm just going to save that setup I, um, and I usually do the name of the mod, the name of the car, the date track so it's apex modding mercedes-benz may 2018 bathurst so just for fun we'll we'll go back to defaults uh, and let's have a look at what we changed and what we didn't change uh, lengthen the final drive ratio and then tweak the gears a little bit to um, you know have the spread between the gears make a bit of sense uh, slower down the steering lock uh, you know, 15 versus 19 degrees. So um, I've got a, a slower steering ratio. Um, in uh, this, the new setup, by the way, is the one on the left here. Increase the diff on power. Decrease the diff on coast. Took the preload down a notch. Running less rear wing because Bathurst, you need top speed to attack. Uh, increase the rev limiter. It's cool today, it's 13 degrees in Bathurst, so we're running low engine cooling. Suspension-wise, what did we do? We, we lowered the spring rate on the rear end to make it just a bit stickier, because we were getting fantastic turn in anyway, so we didn't have to worry about understeer. Um, some slight changes to the front, lowered uh, slow rebound to let the car tip back onto the rears. Fast bump, we didn't need that as high as they were, so we've reduced fast bump. Um, ride height's the same at the front. Big changes to the rear suspension, uh, to dampers. The slow bump is down from 9 to 6. We really wanted the car to settle easy, easier on the rear end. Slow rebound, we left the same. Fast bump, uh, I've lowered significantly, and I've lowered that more than fast rebound. It was just getting very, very bouncy at the rear end. Um, and I've increased front and roll bar. So that's made the front a bit less compliant. Some nice background action there for you. And um, so that moves the car away from being quite so oversteer. It gives it uh, you know, less tendency to introduce itself to the corner too quickly uh, and moves the balance more to the rear end in terms of grip. Um, this is just, this is a quick and dirty setup here. I haven't done the process I would normally do, which, you know, takes me a couple of hours and I, I, I just can't set aside the time to do that for six, 
six cars, six or seven different cars we're going to try today. Uh, we've reduced brake duct flanking. Uh, it was 20% close. We've now got 60% close. On a hot day, uh, we might need to increase brake cooling. And that is the story with the uh, AMG Mercedes-Benz. So the next car we're going to try is the Callaway Corvette Stingray. Uh, the lap that's going on there is actually not a lap in the Callaway yet. It's, uh, I've selected that car and it's showing that, that uh, graphic on a lap I didn't even know. Uh, setup wise we're going to run with defaults initially uh, but increase the fuel level to 100 litres and we'll do a, uh, an installation lap now in that car. I will just check for steering ratio. So that's incredibly quick steering ratio. Um, I'm going to slow that down a little bit. Just uh, intuitively, and I'm going to lower my rear wing. Increase the uh, rev limiter. The rest of it, we, we won't spoil our fun by doing the rest of it off the bat. Okay, so we're now in the Callaway Corvette. Exit's clear. Push. Green flag sector one. Pretty throaty note inside the car. This lazy, big block American V8. But it is absolutely thunderous outside the car. You can see how it happens. Not bad. Into Griffiths. A bit of cutting. Always judging the speed into here. Comes out of the cutting pretty nicely. Defaults. Not a bad car on defaults, really. overwhelmingly dissimilar to the Mercedes. You just don't feel like you need to wear a toupee and a gold chain. Just perhaps a t-shirt talking about Second Amendment gun rights or something like that. This car out of the box, out of faults, is not a bad thing. Ratios. Okay, let's pop here now. 60, 270, 280. A little bit understeery there at high speed, which I think tells me we can take a clicker rear wing off. I think the stop is doing a time lap, so we'll do a time lap. One of the more drivable cars out of the box. Front wheel straining to turn that lumber ride. And start a lap. Comes into the apex quite nicely. Quite a sweet handling car, really. Okay, oil temp is 78. So we can lower engine cooling, I think. Turn in is good. I'm being a bit sensitive for throttle on turn exit, because I know I've got a lot, of, a lot of horsepower here. Low speed turn in is good as well. Punch of brake to get the toe to the nose in. Lift off and up shift. There. Now nah, it's a good test. The S's will. No, nah, we locked up there badly in the S's. I don't know what happened there. Maybe I just was too confident. Because, uh, 
fast bump dampers are too stiff. And the wheel got vibrated off the ground. Looking at the tyre graphic there, we're carrying a fair bit of front tyre temp, which means we're a bit understeery. seconds off your best. I think Jeffrey's comparing my best lap time in an earlier car. Let's try and get a clean lap but it's really quite conservative through the S's. Brakes, leave it in fourth, then third, then second. Get the braking done in a straight line if you can, and take the acute angle there. Sector one is zero point three zero, slower than your best. So down two, two gears, get it turned in much better than last time. So maybe it was a driving issue. Touch the throttle just to get the rear planted. And you can see. Now that's helped us a bit there. Tire temps were definitely starting to burn out the fronts a bit. You're a second off your best in sector two. We're going to have a reasonable lap time. Sector was a 209.92, okay. that puts you 1.0 seconds off your best, sector three is two tenths off your best. Not a bad indicative. Uh, Yellow flag, flag in sector one. So I'm going to go into the garage now and make a couple of subtle tweaks, I won't, uh, I won't take long doing that, but I don't think I'm going to bore you with the changes. Well actually yes I will. I'm pretty happy with gearing, uh, pretty happy with the way the front end's turning in. I think uh, we decided we had a little bit of a um, understeer tendency in Caltex Chase, so we can take a, a notch of front wing off. Engine cooling, we're going from low, uh, sorry, we had full, we're going to go down to medium. Brake map, we're going to have a slightly more aggressive engine braking map. Suspension wise, the, the front is turning in so nicely. Um, do I dare make it stronger at the risk of getting too oversteery? Uh, I could do with a touch more rear grip on corner exit and uh, under brakes. A lot of front toe in there. I'll leave that for now. I don't want to change a dozen things. I mean, uh, what I would recommend normally is you change one thing and make a substantial change, but a lot of things are working really well here. So I'm really just experimenting a bit. I've uh, reduced brake cooling quite a bit because that's a little bit of aero drag, not so much in a in a in a tin top as in an open wheeler. And what have we talked about? We talked about fast bump and fast rebound. Um, see, this is very interesting for a default setup. If we look at these uh, damper settings. Someone spent some time tweaking them. A lot of the time you'll get to a default setup and you'll have very even numbers all the way through here. But you see we've got some asymmetry here, which is very, very interesting. Um, okay, 
that's going to do us for now. And I'm going to just save that as Apex uh, C6 May 2018 Bathurst. And let's see if we can go faster. So what we're doing here, I've had one attempt having made those changes largely to the suspension of this Corvette and it is not as crisp on entry as I commented before. I really loved how pointed the nose was on the entry. But it's quicker out of the corner. And I, on my previous hot lap attempt, I was actually slightly up on the delta. And uh, but then I messed it up. So you're on board with me now. And I try and find out if that was a fluke or not. So my previous best was a 299. Focusing into the touch. So that's really it's the rear ARB that's doing that. Sector 1 is 0.8, up your best. where people have overcooked it and oversteered the really S on race day. Now my delta, I'm 1.35 seconds up. So Sector two times good. So having had a chance to get used to this a little bit, rear grip, punch rear understeer seems to be very, very helpful here at Bathurst. Okay, that worked nicely. Sector three times okay. That's a 20816. Incident in sector one. Sector one is yellow. And that was that was a tidy lap. Okay, so I've just queued up the beginning of lap eight, which was that uh, 208 lap uh, in the Corvette. And I'll leave the telemetry open because we can see what's going on there. Got a break early get the thing turned in but once I've got it turned in I can just be that little bit more assertive on throttle I might even I might even go to the step of adding an, a, a um, an overlay to show you the comparison but it's it's about corner exit and it's about uh, rear end stability so again here at um, Griffins it's not quite as easy to get the car turned in you can see I'm leaving a trace uh, of trailing brake as I get the car pointed in but at the rear end is just that bit more predictable. I can get more done with the rear end. Corner exit here again. And it just allows me to get that throttle down very, very confidently on corner exit, which is very helpful. It's lovely to get that nose pointing in, but the rear was just a bit more errant. So I think we've got a bit more of a neutral balance now where we have just a touch of oversteer. Now, not perfect through here, but we get it turned in tuck the throttle to plant the rear again and we've got a very nicely behaved rear end through here and I'm quicker, quicker with that plant the rear end. And uh, all of that worked pretty well. So that's the quick and dirty setup on the Corvette. 
and it's got us a 208, low 208. So that's um, that's a pretty nice car. Not hard to drive, not hard to set up. I think whoever developed the mod, uh, and we'll just compare a stock setup from something else in a minute. Whoever created this mod put a bit of passion into the default setup uh, for the Corvette. So we've grabbed uh, the Ferrari 458 uh, and uh, to keep things fair we'll grab defaults as our starting point, our roughing in lap or our install lap. Uh, just need to tell my controller to lower the force feedback. Start with about 55% and see how that feels and uh, let's get a lap done in the Ferrari. Always lovely noises. Disengage limiter, all clear, push now. Green flag sector one. Sounds like a bit of trombone is still in the back of the car. Beautiful classic Ferrari noises. balanced already. Force feedback is subtle. Uh, it doesn't feel like there's any crazy stuff going on. Damping wise, fast bump damper wise. Initial turn is good. handling of the car is is pretty good. I'm not, uh, Activate limiter. I'm not uh, upset with uh, the way the car's feeling on the whole. I might tweak a couple of things just for personal preferences. So let's have a little look. So we'll pick the low hanging fruit, see if we can just do a, if we can lengthen the overall ratio. So at the moment it's showing a top speed up, up the right here of probably 265. Uh, let's get up, get that up near the 300. And I like to lengthen first gear. Uh, now that's the limit of first gear, so we can close up the ratios a bit. So uh, fourth, big gap from fourth to fifth. Let's close that up a bit. Third, likewise. Second, likewise. Seconds of gear we'll probably use out of some slow corners like the cutting. Uh, I'm going to just lower that steering ratio a little bit. Not massively. Uh, I'm going to take some wing off to optimise top speed, give us ourselves our maximum revs. I'm going to lower the um, engine cooling just so you can see we've got 12 degrees ambient at the moment in downtown Bathurst. Uh, so that's our general page. Uh, uh, preload, diff preload. Uh, as you can see here in this particular vehicle we can't adjust diff which is true to life in these cars. Preload, uh, I think it's okay. I didn't notice any big issues. We might um, increase the engine brake mapping a little, see if we can get away with that. A bit more help from the, um, the rear axle under brakes. Uh, 
suspension wise we've it's interesting here we've got fast bump on one and fast rebound on seven so it's really allowing a lot of compliance hitting curbs but then con controlling it on the way back same in the rear i'm not going to play with that because um that looks pretty good uh the car is so controllable i think we can make it a bit stronger on the nose uh, and I like to increase um, caster just a little because we get a bit more feel through the uh, through the force feedback. Uh, brake duct blanking. Well, I think we can afford to close up the brakes a little bit, and we're going to make that our initial tweaks. The four five eight May twenty eighteen Bathurst, and let's get out there. Hundred liters of fuel. Yeah, that's correct. Okay, so we're on the way out of the pits, having made those changes. Just see how this car feels. Here it's longer, of course. Uh, fifth up here in the Griffins. Road race in someone else's. Now see how we are gearing. Six now, that should be okay. The cars are doing between 280 and 290 top speed. There's 280, 285, 287. That was fine through there with uh, the lowered wing. We had some it. We had. Uh, lock up there on downshift that tells me I need to put that engine brake back where it was we definitely don't want that either that okay, here we go for time lap set up with the gearing that just made that ridiculous. Forward and blipping, timing it down. 15 
minutes left. That's 15 minutes. Hey, how are you for that time? 2.07.91. Sector 3 is 0.05. Off your best. The Fazaz seems to have a bit of potential. We're up again 0.3 already on the Delta. Was at 206.82. That's your fastest lap. Sector three times is quick. So how about that? A 206.82. So the Ferrari has a bit of potential. So I've just queued up that lap so we can watch the car go around while we chat about it. But um, getting into the 206s was pretty impressive. 206.7 I think it was. Uh, 206.825. So certainly it came more naturally to hand for me than the other ones. And at the moment out of uh, out of the, the three, the Corvette, the AMG and the Ferrari, I would certainly be choosing the Ferrari as a race car. Wasn't hard to drive, predictable, nice balance and pretty quick and uh, you need all of those things for a 12-hour event quiet there just quite pretty watching this car go around that building on the right by the way uh, in real life is a You've got winery. 10 minutes left 10 minutes to go and uh, when I visited Bathurst a year and a half ago and uh, ran a lap on foot I noticed it was up for sale but I couldn't afford to buy it unfortunately so I came back to the UK so as the Ferrari 458 finishes its lap that was a bit of fun and it's a quick car on to the next one Okay, so the next car uh, we'll keep to the we'll keep to the mid-engine, mid-gearbox uh, picture and go from the Ferrari to the McLaren. 
Uh, I think it is nice to get an out lap done, uh, get a time lap, lap done on default. So what I've done this time to so it makes sense is I've I've lengthened the final drive ratio so we won't be bouncing off the limiter. And the other thing I need to do is put all the testing I'm doing is with a full tank of fuel. So all I've done is lengthen the gear gear ratio and put a tank of fuel in and we'll go out in the macker. See how it feels. Uh, the other thing I've got to do is uh, tell it, uh, oh no, that steering felt really heavy. But uh, I'd already backed it off in controller settings to 60 odd percent. Pit exit's clear. Thank you, Jeffrey. Steering ratio feels a bit quick. Your brakes are cold, be careful. to happen is you turn like mad and then when you put your foot back down you've still got a bit of steering lock so the entry understeer can quite often evolve into exit oversteer because of the massive amount of steering lock you've got to apply to get the car turned but you can see from the graphic there the onboard graphic for tyre temps that the fronts are just overheating a lot in comparison to the rears it's just got to be so super quick to uh, counter steer as soon as you uh, use any throttle at all or you're going to get that whip of throttle oversteer. So the car's not feeling very good, it's feeling sluggish on corner entry but feeling very skittish on corner exit. We're gradually climbing in speed, we've probably got too much wind, 280. Yeah, it's understeering through Caltex Chase, so it's definitely an aero-dictated corner. So we can, like we have with the others, definitely take some rear wing off. But let's do a timed lap. The car is at least drivable over a lap. We'll get a timed lap in. hell corner and up the long climb. As you can see, uh, oil and water temps are way too low, we're overcooled. We've only got, uh, well, ambient temp is 11 degrees at the moment in Bathurst. Let's just get a clean lap.
was a 209.18. That's your okay. fastest lap today. Sector three time is quick. Not such a bad lap time, but uh, we can improve that car a lot. So Sector one is yellow. Perhaps it's got potential. So let's get into it. What are we going to do with this car? Get into the garage. We will uh, lengthen the final car ratio a bit more. Uh, steering wise, I want to reduce the steering lock a little bit so it's not quite as twitchy. Uh, I want to add some diff lock on the power side so it's not as twitchy on throttle. I'm going to take some diff lock off on the coast side so I get better turn in. Preload. Hmm. I'm going to leave that as it is for now. Uh, rear wing, we're going to bring that down to... Oh, okay. That was on eight. Let's bring it down to a five. Increase our rev limits. Reduce our engine cooling. Engine brake map is on zero. We'll leave that alone. Uh, I'm not going to make any other suspension changes just at the minute. Actually, I'd like it stronger on the nose on turn entry. Uh, 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 and what will I do? I'm going to increase caster a bit, as is my habit. I'll leave um, camber alone for a minute. Brake duct blanking, we can close them up a bit because it's a cool day and we're, we're overcooling our brakes. We'll try with 60%. Rear camber there intuitively to me looks wrong. Uh, it just looks too much compared to front camber. But I'm going to leave it for now so I just don't do a dozen things in one go. Uh, or, or will I not? Yeah, look, let's just lower rear camber. Let's put it at about half what front camber is. Uh, I'm going to increase front camber. And let's see if we can't get this car turning in a little bit better. Let's give that a shot. <clears throat> so we'll see how it feels on the outlap. Limit is still on. Disengage it. Exit's clear. Push. Sector 1 is clear. Front is definitely more responsive. Rear still wants to play away a little bit. I've definitely got a much stronger end on turning, a stronger front end on turning, which I'm enjoying. I can get the car where I want to much more easily. So it's not so, suddenly now such a rush to get the steering unwound. On, I'm kind of ready to wind off the steering anyway because I've gotten where I want to get. Not bad through there. Dipper. Yeah, no, the car's feeling quite a lot better. I've got uh, Dash Meter Pro up so I can look at brake temps. Your tires are really cold, watch out. Nice for people there to see them on screen. And cool nicely at this speed. You wouldn't want them going any hotter than that. Started the session, so I've lost my previous best time. I think. Oh no, it's way nine one eight two. If 
by the way, I'm on, I'm on the P1 server. I'm on a public, well, it's a public server insofar as anybody who's registered for the race has the password and can use it, so other people might turn up, which is nice. So they've set a real road, they kept it static. Sector 1 is quick. You can speed through there isn't easy. Time is quick. Just noticing my best time is already on the dashboard in front of me in the car, so it feels a bit silly. The fronts are still getting very hot. The car's fine through there, so we haven't taken up too much. I pushed it too hard there. Locked up the rears. That was a driver error, but you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to reduce the engine braking ever so slightly. Maybe I'll try to just remember that and drive around it. Come on, David. Sector one time is good, your ears are cold. Downshifting, I'm moving brake bias forwards, so I'm less likely to lock up the rears, but I'm going to just have to be a bit more skillful. Downshift into second a bit later. Doesn't sound that complicated when you say that loud, does it? Up 1.9. Just done a 207.15. Good lap. That's your quickest today. 207.15. Promising. But what do we do in the uh, Ferrari? We did a 206.825. Well, it's only a third of a second. But you know what? I, I think I can do better in this car. So I'm going to leave the camera on while I try to sort this out. So that's the lap on in the background while I um, just pontificate about this a little bit uh, the big stuff I think the gearing the gearing is okay except I think second gear is causing issues on downshift do I lengthen I'm going to lengthen second gear one click because I use it up through the cutting and I use it at uh, forest elbow and that won't hurt it being lengthened one click um, Preload on two is fine. Rear wing, I think we can go down one because we're, we're fine through the chase. We're fine through uh, 
McPhillamy Park, the entry, uh, or the entry to Skyline. Uh, I could soften engine brake map, map slightly. Front end roll by time, rear end roll by time. The car is actually here. Uh, advanced settings. Uh, I'm happy with the cameras. Okay, so we just put the little in off the car. And then we can try and drive the car a little bit better. Oh, it's not quite simple. I'm going to turn the uh, filming off for the outlap to save time, save you time. Well, unless I can, I can edit it out, I suppose, later. Oh no, that's the thing, we've, we've, we've still got excessive... All clear, fronts. push now, disengage. I went back into setup, and I softened the front springs, because... If it takes it, it's clear. mid corner balance is just seeming to fade the front grip, uh, rather rear grip, the fronts are overheating. Understeer balance, however, I've also taken the click off the rear wing. So the thing about softening the front springs is they don't react quite as quick, and when they do, they're just a bit ponderous and gummy. Front grip. So it might be nicer to do it dampers on the whole bars. The tyres are cold, watch out. It seems to be at this point a bit tricky trying to get the rear tyres to come to the party. Off the front springs for quite a lot of aero damage. You might need to come in and get it fixed. So I'm going back up on the front springs. Uh, I'm going to try. See on this downhill descent down the mountain, the softer front springs are just hooking the front end up too much. Uh, I'm going to try lowering front any roll bar and leave the springs as they were. Um, do I dare to stiffen rear springs? Why the hell not? Let's have a go. Okay, off camera. I went back in and um, did a few little tweaks to fast pump dampers because having softened the front, sorry, stiffened the rear suspension, I was getting oversteer braking into. Forest elbow, but I'm watching the replay. It seems it was more to do with tyres getting bounced off the deck and locking up, and then that throwing me the oversteer on the brakes. So I've uh, lowered the fast bump dampers at both ends. Uh, I've retained the same asymmetry, but lowered the number. mean that the springs can do a slightly better job keeping the, car, uh, the tire on the road and it could bounce around like mad so let's see how we go let's see if we can do a high to a six Okay. Out of there. Okay. Stiffer rear springs are letting me point the car. It's 
better through there. Yeah, I think making the fast bump damp is just a touch. The fast bump adjustment on the damp is just a touch compliant. Sector 2 is two tenths off your best. Let's see what we can do. Might be another lap. I just want to get this down into the high 07s. Just feels it's got the potential to match the Ferrari. But I've got to say it's more of a handful to drive. Two eight six eight six. How about that? Sector three time is fast. Now with warm tyres, it would be better. So we've done better than we thought we would. The uh, the Ferrari was a two oh six. I know two oh six eight. Oh, we're in the same second as the Ferrari. I was out for a second. Memory leading down. Aaron on the same tent. And I'm finding the McLaren double shift there. A little bit more of a handful. It just doesn't talk to me the way the Ferrari does. drivable uh, without nuking those front tyres. I mean, it's a very common thing. Look out for the pit speed limit. It's a very common thing to uh, for modders to build a car that's a bit understeery because it's so much easier to manage than something that's oversteery. But you can't have your car set up for an endurance race where it's going to wear its front tyres out miles before the rears because you just go into this terminal understeer situation and lose massive pace. So you've got to put it more on the nose but you've got to be able to do that uh, and keep it drivable. So that would be the challenge with this car. But we've got a 206867 which compares with a 20. Sorry, a 206.867, which compares to a 206.825. So we're, we're four hundredths off the Ferrari pace, but um, it's a little edgier. Getting that, lap, getting that lap out of the McLaren's a little bit edgier. So uh, this time we're going to jump into the Bentley as we take a nice view from uh, Hell Corner. That's the action cam that films all the pit camera action. So nice animation within the R-Factor 2 sim. Bathurst, by the way, is a third-party affiliate track, which means that they outsourced the building of this track to a gentleman whose name escapes me, and I'll, I'll put it in the credits, but he's done a fantastic job. I love this track to death. I was here in 87 to watch the touring car round. That was the one where the, the Sierras were controversially disqualified to allow the great, late, great Peter, Rock, uh, Peter Brock to get his first win. So there we are, we're in the, uh, in the big Bentley. Uh, 
fun fact for you. The Bentley runs effectively half the Bugatti Veyron engine because it's running a 4-litre V8 with twin turbos. And that's, of course, an Audi-derived power plant. Same engine in the RS6, in fact. Whereas the Bucati Veyron runs uh, an 8-litre quad turbo. Uh, so just a double the Bentley engine and you've got the Bugatti Veyron engine. Uh, Bugatti Veyron engine. So uh, let's do the same as we did last time out. We'll just uh, we'll do an installation lap on defaults. We'll just make sure the gearing's able to cope with the predicted top speed. And no, it's not. We're going to be a lot closer to 300 than we are 250. Can I go longer? I'm just going to extend the final drive ratio. I'm going to extend top gear so that we're uh, able to sort of hit 280 at least. And that's all I'll do for now. And um, on defaults, we'll get out there. Oh, she's a beast, isn't she? The only thing small about this car... Pit, pit exit's clear. The only thing small about this car is the steering wheel. So let's get some heat into these brakes. Steering wheel in the race of our footage, and I have a good look at the onboard footage from Bathurst. The, uh, the race steering wheel on the bent is no bigger than the wheel I have on my sim rig. I run an OSW wheel, uh, but I, uh, I've got a modded, a converted um, uh, Fanatec Formula One, ring, ring, uh, Formula One wheel. So, that great big bed there, see the guy twiddling something pretty much resembling the form of the wheel. Always made me giggle. Uh, now, getting back to the car, I've just managed to not touch the wall there, but um, the car's balance doesn't feel too bad. Looking at the tyre temps, we haven't got chronic understeer going on, which was a real issue with, uh, certainly with the Corvette, oh, sorry, the Macca, the McLaren. Go for a uh, time lap on the fourth. With the gearing ratio. I'm going to pick at a couple of things with a bit of understeer there. That's pretty common in that corner. We'll take a peek at uh, brake temps. So you can see there they're not uh, insignificant. Gearing 270 kph. Gearing a little bit. Great cooling looks about okay. So we'll put a lap in. Certainly it had some top speed at the Nordschleife when we did the 24 hours of the Nordschleife a few months back. Bentley in the field there and uh, putting in some very fast lap times and then probably got the fastest lap of the race. But uh, unfortunately for the team that gets back to consistency amongst the driver lineup. So <laughs> we were leading the event and come screaming up behind us somewhere or another. The position and see the barrels four laps down. That was much like the field at the time. Uh, lift and let them through. So they certainly, the bent makes its presence felt. Uh, interesting noise, uh, noises on board here. When you when you hear the noises, uh, external noises, it's uh, remarkable. It's like a very prestigious, very loud episode of flatulence. Not minding the hair, really. Not my conversation, but really, probably the best job I could have done with driving the car. A little bit of a kick of oversteer there on the throttle, but not nearly so bad as we experienced 
initially in, say, the McLaren. Base frame. It's probably a ton lighter than the one that go uh, literally a ton. The last lap was a 211.02. That's your quickest lap. Sector three times okay. There's our lap time, 211.02. And I, I must admit, I was probably cruising a fair bit there. But we won't go and do another one. We'll go in and uh, have a look at some picking some low hanging fruit if we can. So, um, steering wise, I will slow the rack down just a tiny bit. I was fairly happy with the steering. Um, I think we can afford to reduce uh, diff on coast. Diff on power side, I think I'll leave it where it is. Going to take some wing off. Pretty common theme down here. Give it some more RPM. Now having taken wing off and given it more revs and reduced the cooling through the radiator, we uh, are going to need slightly longer legs because we were just about touching the limiter uh, and see if I can close up these ratios a bit we've got first gear up to 100 Se second gear won't move that is annoying that is annoying okay so if second gear won't move there's very little point putting first gear next to it uh, third gear yeah, well, we've got reasonable spacing there other than first. We're not going to have a usable first gear. Not the end of the world. Um, okay, we've done cooling. We've done uh, rev limits. Um, I'm not going to really do anything with suspension until we get a little bit more to work with. Got a fair bit of tow in there, which is potentially helping the car with uh, initial turn in at the front end. But I, I'm, as I said, I'm not minding the handling, really. I will increase uh, caster slightly. I won't do much because the car feels pretty good. Increasing caster will give you more feel through the force feedback. It will give you a bit more camber mid-corner, but it does slow the front end down a bit. And Maybe that's something I should have done with the, with the McLaren. Um, camber intuitively just looks wrong. I mean, rear camber shouldn't be that great. The rears have got to propel the car. I'm going to lower rear camber. Uh, brake duct cooling, I don't think we can afford to run them much hotter than they're running at the moment. And that's going to do us, so I'm going to save that. We've got a full... Um, full tank of fuel let's see what uh, the car feels like okay so we've exited the pits on our way up mountain straight for the first time this is the, the outlap make those changes okay front wheel lock up that's just bank balance Now, 
through the rear wing and through radiator changes. Let's see if we get to there for a minute. We're on two, just under 290 kph. So we're getting a very good top speed there. Second gear, you can see there, it's just a little shorter than I wanted it to be. Five tenths look good. It's nice through there. The Murray's. Easy over the top of the mountain, so don't talk much. 2.6 seconds up. Sector 2 time is okay. Pretty much fine. 
time I lost, taking that little extra portion, roughly equal to the time I uh, gained. It's so hot and messing it up. Time's quick, left side tires are cold. That lap was a 207.51. That's your fastest lap. You're two so tenths off your best in sector three. So, yeah, exactly as Jeffrey just said, I was up about half a second, but I managed to Yellow flag. mess up in sector three there, lose a bit. Must have been through the braking zone into Caltex Chase and the turn out of Caltex Chase. I think a 207.2 is probably, uh, would be a fair call, but that's not what we achieved. We achieved a 207.5. So um, that's the Bentley. What do I think about the Bentley? So let's enjoy the external noises of the Bentley while we perhaps talk about it. What do I think about it? Um, it's, it's a fun car. Um, pretty civil handling, pretty neutral handling. It does feel, manage to feel big somehow. I mean, it's amazing what Apex have done. They just do a great job conveying these cockpit, the cockpit ambience. And it's a fun car to drive fast. It's got very good brakes for um, a beast that's as big as it is. It's got a good top speed. And it doesn't seem to be doing anything really particularly nasty to its tyres to achieve that, hot sp uh, that top speed. So, um, yeah, nice car. You could enjoy a 12-hour race uh, in the Bentley. And certainly the the spectators, uh, I, I, you know, personally, it's obviously it's very subjective, but personally I think seeing these fences run around is just great, great fun. Hearing that walk is uh, flatulent sounding in course note. I, I, was, I watched them go around at uh, Donington a few months ago uh, in a round of British, uh, uh, British GT championships. And um, yeah, uh, just, they just sound fabulous. And they fabulous. They're just an Great, big, impressive beast. And as you saw, we, we didn't really go deep into setup. It was a fairly quick and dirty approach to setup. We didn't have to do much. There wasn't much to solve. And I think with a little bit more, a little bit more tweaking, of course, it would be possible to get into the very low Troy 7s and maybe even a high Troy 6 like we did with the Ferrari and the McLaren. But that's, of course, uh, that's, I'll leave, we'll leave that to the teams that are going to run them. So I hope you enjoyed uh, seeing the Bentley go around. And now we'll, uh, we'll let him uh, cross the finish line. And then we'll decide what we're going to have a play with next. So here we are in the, the BMW Z4. Every, um, every uh, Playboy's favourite choice as the car that he gives his girlfriends. And uh, we're going to do the same thing. We'll make sure our gearing's okay uh, for the sort of top speeds we're envisaging. And, and I think we do need to make uh, six gear that little bit longer. Um, and the rest of it we'll leave alone for now. Um, we've put 100 litres of fuel in. And we're going to jump in and uh, test the defaults. See how, see how it feels. <laughs> Disengage limiter, tracks clear, push, 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 sector one is clear. Got to say, I'm not a fan of the engine note of the BMW. I just find it a bit tinny. Okay, it's uh, handling is quite wavy. Understeer and turn in. Oversteer and exit. 
see on the fronts there, the tire tent graphic there. The fronts are really uh, sliding a lot, so that's an understeery car. Look at the rears compared to the fronts. Handful through there. Wouldn't want to do that for 12 hours. Um, so look at the temps, the front temps compared to the rear temps. Massive discrepancy there. It's allowed to do it here, they won't do it, but uh, overall, I'll ask Jeffrey about it. How are tyre temps? The left side tyres are cold. Do a uh, oh, oh, handful there. Oh, nearly broke my thumb. That I've got one of those OSW wheels. Yellow flag, watch out. I'm not going to do another out lap though. That's not going to interfere with our time lap. And I think it's nice to set a benchmark lap. Dashmeter Pro, so I've got all the data that I need sitting in front of me on the Dashmeter Pro. Just as well, because I can be struggling to read the gear, but the gear on me. Yes, and I probably should be able to count it out. Front wear already uh, significantly worse than rear wear. Front temps from that story. Well, it wasn't as hairy as one of the tyres had all warmed up a bit. It wasn't as hairy as it was on the outlap. And this time that managed to not quite spin at that time. And it was a bit nasty after that, you know, good break in sounds. Sector three is two tenths off your best. So we're not entirely out of the postcode in terms of what the other cars have achieved, um, and it's just a bit twitchy to drive. So what are we going to do? What are we going to do with this car? Uh, I think we can lower engine cooling at these temperatures. We can increase the um, the rev limiter, which is going to mean we probably don't need to. Um, go longer on the gear ratios as I lower the rear wing. Uh, diff preload, I'm inclined to keep it pretty high because um, because the, the it just misbehaves a bit on throttle. So there's our low hanging fruit, uh, radio to size, brake map, uh, brake cooling, I've got to confess I didn't have a proper look at brake cooling. Uh, but let's reduce brake cooling a little bit anyway. Uh, rear camber I just think is too high, it's too close to front camber and of course the rears, the general philosophy is that the rears have got to propel the car as well as turn the car and stop the car so you, you need them a little bit flatter on the road 
uh, suspension wise. Now I talked before about the Ferrari and how somebody had caressed it and given it a lot of love in terms of the damper settings. Here is a car with a default setup that hasn't had much love in its development. We're all sevens all the way through. Now this car is suffering from entry understeer, uh, which is then translating into exit oversteer. How to fix an entry understeer? Well, quite often it's it's uh, a matter of stiffening front springs for strong initial response. Um, we'll tr we'll go down that route and see if it hurts us mid corner, and uh, we want to get. Onto that, onto that front end quicker so we're going to reduce the slow bump so we should get stronger initial response um, we don't need fast bump that high without looking at the data I'm just going to take a punt on that um, rear springs um, hmm. need to think about that for a minute uh, rear ride height I have front any roll bar, I'm going to soften front any roll bar and I'm going to stiffen the rear springs because I want to get the rears working more. I want to see we've got so much grip in the rear and that's why the fronts are breaking away and the fronts are um, getting hot. Uh, I'll increase front towing as well to get better front end response. And I, I haven't played much with ride height through this whole exercise, but I'll just drop front ride height a bit. And I'm going to increase rear ride height slightly to make the car a bit stronger on the nose. So let's see if we can stop those rear, those front tyres just getting obliterated. We'll get an idea from our initial... Pit takes it's clear. Crazy. But really, if we can find a second and a half, uh, we're in the postcode with these other cars. Now, of course, what P1 Racing does, that's better, much better through Griffiths. It's responding and pointing in quicker. P1 do is they've got a very a team of very strong drivers, one of the best endurance races I've come across, and they look long and hard at uh, what we call BOP, balance of performance, because if you're going to invite 50 teams to come and do a 12-hour race or a 24-hour race, we're talking about over 100 drivers committing a massive amount of work to become competitive, and you just can't afford to have one car that is just or OT, a car that is just quicker than everything else. You either have, everybody has to race that car, which gets a bit boring, or people have an unfair advantage. And if you put a massive amount of work, it is just no fun to find there's a car on the track that you just can't match it with, based on skill, but based on the performance of the car. So the team does a lot of testing and addresses the balance, the balance of the all around. They might tweak the, uh, the drag settings a little bit, make the car a little bit harder to push through the air, so you lose a bit of top speed. It's a quick and easy fix. They might um, increase the weight of the car a tiny bit, they might increase the horsepower a tiny bit. And other little subtle tweaks can be done, like they might, if a car really needs a bit of help, they might give it a bit more fuel. So every now and then that car's going to gain the advantage of a pit stop. So, which becomes quite interesting because you'll have cars managing to do just a handful more laps, albeit a second or a bit slower. But over a race they come back into the picture on strategy. So, So occasionally people get upset because their favourite cars had a, a bit of a massage on, on BOP. But generally speaking, these guys get it right. Something very noticeable about this car is it, uh, it 
does. You've got cold front tyres. Just as Jeffrey mentions that your um, the performance changes a lot as the tyres come in. But it's not a bad thing. Jeffrey's already mentioned the fronts are cold. Well, he wouldn't have said that before because the fronts were just being nuked through through understeer. Funnily enough, stiffening the front springs, although it gives better initial response, Okay, well I've just about given up on this car. The bodywork's in pretty bad shape. We might need to fix that. So we're at 207.383. That's really our best attempt. If I continue ragging this car, it's just a bit unfair on all the other cars, really. it's If it's twitchy, if it's hard to exploit its absolute best potential, well, that really needs to be reflected in uh, what I've achieved, <laughs> which you can see there quite graphically. So we'll we'll put the BMW to bed with a 207.383. I don't think that's unfair. Uh, I did find it a handful. I found it quite edgy to, to, to put on the limit. And with, I think with a bit of setup work, it could be nicer, which I guess is you know, stating the bleeding obvious. But the things that made it awkward were not catastrophic. Uh, I think they could be sorted with a lot of tinkering. But that's not we're here for, what we're here for. We're here for a quick and dirty analysis of what all the cars feel like. So the last of our tests today is going to be on the Chevrolet Camaro. Uh, I've got a beautiful uh, skin that I did for the Kevin Bartlett Channel 9 car for Bathurst, but I would have to exit the game and load the skin, and I'm afraid I've just been a little bit too lazy. So anyway, I'm going to run this uh, run this test with that particular skin, but I might add something at the end, doing a lap of the Camaro in the, in the Channel 9 skin. So what I've done here is I've just, uh, as before, to make sure we can get... Uh, a representative lap done on defaults. I'll just increase slightly the final, 
gear ratio and um, we'll go from there uh, oh, and put 100 litres in. That's our standard manoeuvre for an opening lap. Oh, we've got that. We've got that beautiful V8 rumble. Limiter still on. Disengage it. All clear. Push now. Now that's what a V8 should sound like. Definitionally, it's an error. You know, if you're understeering through there, you know, you know we can take some of them off, like we did for all the other cars. You guys are flying lap. Okay, we can have a little bit more initial bike at the front end. Corner exit is fine. You can expect an understeer setup. Tire temps at the bottom right there, that we feel would be reasonable. And the steer. Sector 3 is 0 0.6, off your best. With a little bit of damage. Potentially we have a quick car in our hands. Um, okay, so let's pick the low hanging fruit. Radiator, I think we can go smaller. Always take any extra revs that are available. Um, brake, 
engine brake map, I think we can uh, sharpen that up a bit. We'll take off some rear wing, as we know, we had um, high speed understeer. Now the car wasn't really wayward under throttle, nor wayward under brake, so we're going to take a little bit of coast off on diff lock. And we might even take a touch of power off on diff lock as well. I like running a slightly uh, different steering ratio, that's just a personal preference. Starting at the other end, uh, again I think those the uh, rear camber is too great. Uh, brake ducting we will lower. Uh, suspension or chassis, quite liking the way this car is turning in. I'll just add a touch to uh, I don't want to slow, uh, I certainly don't want to slow the front end down too much. Now we were getting some low speed, some medium speed understeer as well, so I'm going to take a bit off the front slow bump so it engages with the front end a bit quicker. Uh, I'm going to leave the rear for now. Uh, again, getting the front end a bit more active, I'm going to uh, lower front any roll bar and this should also have the impact of decreasing that front tyre wear. Let's uh, see how it feels. We've got a lot of toe in at the front end which is okay. Um, yeah let's just let's just try that for now. Sector 3 time is fast. It's a better turn one, help corner, not turn one five. Let's see if the car run out of the wider. We can get this one out of the corner. I ran it wide here before. Sector one time is good. Just this happened. Good understeer here again. Wide here. was a 206.37 that's your quickest lap well, sector three times quick isn't that interesting a 206 yellow flag caution 37 with you saw it happen a very minimal amount of setup work and that is our quickest car um, out of the lot uh, pretty vanilla flavored pretty laid back to drive uh, the setup could be improved substantially from where we left it. So we'll let you enjoy the uh, external view of the Camaro while we just uh, close off uh, on the subject of what it's like as a car. Uh, well, it caught me by surprise a little bit. It was uh, pretty easy to set up. No uh, massive vices or issues that needed to be solved. And with a quick and dirty approach to just, you know, optimization, trying a few different things, uh, we got it down with you know with a hundred litre fuel load as per the other cars to a, an acceptable lap time in the 206s, low 206s. 
And, uh, you know, like all the other cars, and I'm trying to make it apples with apples by not sort of going too deep with any particular, uh, any of the particular cars. But for example, we haven't touched uh, tyre pressures, which can have a big impact. Uh, you know, there's quite a few parameters that we haven't really optimised one by one. We've just had a bit of a stab and get, oh, well, how, how, how does that feel? How does that work for us? But from a, a quick and dirty point of view, uh, the Camaro was easy to set up, easy to drive, pretty predictable. And uh, not a bad beast, really. And I think uh, from an endurance perspective, that's what you want. Yeah. You, know, you don't want you know, too many things to react to. I mean, I would find the Z4 exhausting <laughs> to drive for a couple of hours, whereas the Camaro, it's probably a bit more like driving a, uh, a saloon car. Let's get into it and uh, enjoy it. So uh, that wraps up the Camaro. Uh, thank you very much. Oh, and that, that was even with an off track excursion while I spoke to you. <laughs> we'll just watch him go through the chase. And we'll sign off on the Chevy Camaro. So now we come to the self indulgent bit. We get to have a bit of a look at and a bit of a drive of my my favourite uh, favourite car for endurance racing or favourite car for tin top racing at all really is the the Porsche 911 GT3 and uh, Apex Modding have uh, produced a beautiful car in their latest version um, in truth uh, when Apex first uh, launched the, the 911 it, it, it wasn't a perfect car it was an early conversion from their R Factor 1 work very highly rated R Factor 1 work, uh, but uh, it wasn't really, in my opinion, the, the best available car. But they've kept ref working on it, kept refining it. Um, I had the uh, the pleasure and the privilege of um, of being asked to get involved with the beta testing, and in fact, uh, created the, the 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 base setup uh, for the 911 in an earlier version of this mod. Not sure if it's been changed or not, but um, yeah, it's now a absolutely fantastic car. This is my uh, my favourite personal skin, uh, and I always run the same colours. Um, kind of a burnt orange, uh, as close as I could get to the original McLaren orange, with a carbon fibre bonnet. With a, at Bathurst, I run a Visit New South Wales a decal on the rear wing, and a kangaroo warning sign. And this is a skin I did for a, a drive in a Bathurst 12 hours about a year ago with a, a guy called Michael Teekman. And uh, yeah, so that's the skin I run when I have uh, my uh, my say uh, in uh, in the 911 GT3. So let's take it for a ride. I'm not going to drive it with uh, default uh, setup. Makes sense. Clear. Push. This is um, the setup. Uh, Your brakes are cold. Take it easy. Jeffrey. The setup that I've loaded is uh, uh, set up for working on for this actual event, so I'm afraid I'm not going to share that at this stage. But uh, it's been a lot of laps uh, getting the mind it right. Hundreds of laps, really. So it's a car that's uh, very dear to my heart and uh, got it set up to work quite well, I think. It's just in comparison to see all that extra work and all that extra setup time it manifests itself in that time. But just a beautiful car to drive. You've got a flat six engine sitting over the rear axle, so you've got to, you've got to drive it remembering that. And you definitely want to keep that flat six engine behind you in sections like this. You definitely don't want to be turning the wheel and hitting the brakes at the same time. And the occasional jab on the throttle will just settle the tail back down when you need to but on, ga on the gas you can push it pretty hard but it's just the personal favourite love driving this car so I'll be teaming up with, um, with Lars Hagerman and Cody Blanton and along with Bjorn uh, Hagerman uh, we won um, the, the 24 hours of the launch life by P1 Gaming. 
last time it was run. It was a few months ago now. Very exciting race. Uh, featuring real weather, live real world weather. You never know when it's going to rain. And it is highly likely to rain at some point. So here we go for a timed lap. Bring brake bias rearward slightly to increase turn in here. And I'll leave it back all the way up the mountain. It just buys me a tiny bit better turn in. Second gear, lift of the throttle, turn left for the dipper. Now I'm going to fire back again because I don't want the fronts to lock up any more than they need to. Lift of the throttle just as I came into that. Plant the rear. And now we're on to Conrad Straight. I'll move brake fires forwards again because it costs a little bit of front wear but you do not want a rear, rear lock-up coming into the chase or the braking zone after the chase. Because once the rear let go, let's go, there's a massive amount of inertia behind that engine. Just done a 206.75. That's your fastest lap today. Sector 3 time is fast. It's 206, but we can do better. Tires are coming a bit. Just had a bit more grip. Time's okay. Good luck. That's your quickest today. Sector three times okay. I don't like to run brake cooling down too low at this track because the big attacks and the big defences tend to happen down in the public's chase. And that's where the 
brakes. If you're pushing too hard there, you'll often pay a price in the final corner, Murray's corner. Sector one is quick. More patience there, that worked better. Lap was at 205.34. That's your fastest lap. Sector three time is quick. Make this our last lap. Now we're up to eight. That's the one corner. Tires, you can see, are at a lovely temperature now. Just done a 204.92. Good lap. That's your quickest today. That was better. So we'll end the end the segment with an external view of the 911. Uh, we did a 204.915, which was in a few, within a few tenths of my best time so far uh, on full fuel. There are guys on the server getting down into the 201s, which I think is uh, probably on quali fuel. But uh, yeah, 100 litres with, uh, with, yeah, with a full tank of 100 litres, getting into the 204s uh, is okay. But the 911 is, you know, I know the car very well. Uh, spent a lot of laps in it. This setup's just been optimised. And so it's possible to just go nice and quick. We've seen them on board, so we'll do the external shot. But it's a particularly nice car to drive quickly in. I guess uh, it's got to be part of the reason they've been successful for so long. There's been a lot of imitator, imitators come along, a lot of other vehicles wanting to attack the segment that the 911 owns. 
and I know in some markets the car scene is a bit of a sort of a pose, a bit of a pose machine. But in other parts of the world and in certain segments of the market, it is just about the performance. It's about the way the car drives, and that's what I love so much. I love hooking this up for a lap, particularly around Bathurst. It is just so rewarding to get it right. And so far, I haven't had much luck. We've had technical issues. Had technical issues a year ago when P1 uh, ran a. At 12 hours of Bathurst, uh, we were in a competitive place and we had, uh, we had a, a bit of a glitch. And uh, six months ago or eight months ago, when I skinned this car for the um, another 12 hour event at Bathurst, uh, a solder let go on my on my brakes in my pedals. So I was just about where the car is now and uh, suddenly had no brakes. So that was game over. But yeah, preparing for this one, really looking forward to the event. If anybody of you, if you're curious uh, at uh, having a look, it'll be streamed live by P1 Gaming. Just look for them on YouTube, and it's uh, bound to be another great event.